Hello, biology students. Today we're going to be talking about the different types of evidence for evolution, which helps us figure out common ancestors as well as, well, what did that ancestor way back look like? All right. So there's four major categories of this type of evidence. They are the fossil record, body structures, similarities in embryology, embryos, and biochemistry. We're going to go through each of these in detail. Let's start with the fossil record. The fossil record is showing us with some rocks and which are just compressed sediment, especially sedimentary rocks, which are more likely to be our type of rocks with fossils in it. And so these types of rocks, um, they will be found in the soil in different layers and the layers show us the age and the older the fossils the deeper they're going to be in the soil right sometimes we will actually find the organism especially if it was a something that was made of bone uh, softer things that don't have bones are less likely to leave fossils um, and more recent things are going to be up further at the top of the soil. And the reason why that is the case is because soil, which eventually becomes rock, that, that is put down in layers over time. Picture yourself putting down pieces of paper. The paper you put down a long this time ago is the one at the bottom. And that's kind of how we think about these layers. Fossil records can really give us a time period for when an organism might have been around. Body structures is one of our biggest focus areas this year. And when we think about body structures, we can be thinking about actually looking at the bones and the components and the shapes of the bones. The big idea here is the more similar those body or bone structures are, the more likely two organisms have a recent common ancestor. And that phrase you're going to hear over and over and again. So we can look at this image where we have a human, cat, whale, and bat, and we can see that these structures that make up their arm and hand, they are the same. They're slightly different shapes, but they're the same type of structure throughout, even though these are such different types of animals. Um, and they use their structures for such different reasons. And so because this is such a broad category, body structures, we have a couple different major vocab terms we're going to talk about in a second in great detail. Those are the following terms, homologous structures, analogous structures, and vestigial structures. Yeah, they're all really hard to say, so please listen on how I say them and try to mimic that. We're going to talk about each of those in detail. Let's try with the first one. Homologous structure has the prefix homo in it, and we know that prefix homo means same. And so these are structures that have different jobs or functions, but they are actually the same structure within. So even though this human hand and cat leg and whale flipper and bat wing are all used for different things, whether it's flying, walking, or grabbing, they all have the same internal structure. And that in same internal structure is what we're talking about with homolia, same internal structure. And that shows common ancestry. We don't know what the common ancestor probably looked like for these guys because we, we might not have the exact fossil record transitioning. But for instance, we have gotten some cool fossil records for the whale ancestor that shows that it did in fact kind of look more like a mammal than the whale itself, which is a mammal. It's got hair and gives live birth and we can see that it has those same exact structures too. So we can think about this as common ancestry. Please write down the example so that you can refer to it and remember about it in class because there's a lot of different new terms. So this first term, homologous, different function, same structure internally. That's pretty much the opposite of this one, which is analogous. It sounds like the word analogy analogous. An analogy means they seem similar, but maybe they're not exactly the same. So these are both wings, right? But the internal structure is very different. So this bird wing has bones, right? But does an insect wing have bones? No, insects are very, very distantly related to birds. They're both animals, and yeah, they have a common ancestor way back when, but it's not very recent at all. <laughs> And that's because these internal structures are so different 
that even though they seem like they're an analogy because they're both wings, they're actually not showing oops, common ancestry. So even though they seem similar because of the job, they're actually pretty different, not a common ancestor. Make sure you jot down an example so it resonates with you. Next, we have vestigial structures. Vestigial structures can tell us what a common ancestor might have been like. Um, and so our biggest example is the whale pelvis. A pelvis is a part of the um, your, our leg bone structures, and it's where our leg attaches to our hip, right? And so whales, we would think, wouldn't need this structure because do we see them walking around? No. But what this suggests is that the whale has an ancestor that did, in fact, have actual legs. Even though this structure is no longer used, it has a remnant in the whale. Uh, we have some examples of this in our own bodies. We think about our uh, tailbone as an example of a uh, a vestigial structure, a structure that's no longer used but sh tells us some of the past history about the organism. Now we're switching to another category. We're done with those um, body structures in general. Yes, this is going to be about body structures, but it's body structure specific to an embryo. An embryo is a very early developing organism. It's usually for especially um, when we think about mammals, we're thinking about them in the womb. Um, when we think about embryology, we're really thinking about those like almost alien looking babies, right? And the really cool thing is that what we see in these really early developing embryos is they have a lot of similarities. I can tell here that later they're developing into totally different organisms, but they all seem to have tails and they all look a lot alike. And because they have very similar structures, that means they must have a recent common ancestor. Now, two of them look a lot more similar than another, and that's the bird and the rabbit. Right? The salamander looks relatively different, and that's because it is a further, it would have a further common ancestor. These guys are a little bit more closely related, and that kind of makes a little bit of sense. So let's kind of point out some of these key structures that we see in the embryos that are really common. All organisms that are vertebrates, meaning they have backbones, they're going to have common ancestry seen because of the following two major structures. They are the fact that all these guys had tails, all right, which is pretty interesting. This one has a tail. It's just a little harder to see because of the big bubble here. And they all have this weird thing called a pharyngeal gill slit. This is a new vocab word. And this pharyngeal gill slit is seen here. They look kind of like maybe fish gills. And what's really curious is that almost all vertebrates have this. So even if we're a fish, which has backbones, to that salamander again, we have a tortoise, chicken, a, a hog, which is a pig, a cow, a rabbit, and even a human has those gill slits at that early stage in development. And we also have a tail. Notice that they start to diverge and be less similar at a later stage of embryonic development. And as we start to develop even further, they look even more and more different. Organisms that are more closely related, these are all of our mammals, all right, they look more similar for longer. And the ones that are different have many different traits and further common ancestry start to diverge and look different earlier. Last but not least, we have our biochemical evidence. Biochemical evidence is referring to similarities within the nucleotides, DNA, or amino acid sequences, proteins, for two different organisms. The more similarities they have, the more likely they have a common ancestor. So we could see this by comparing the DNA sequences of dogs, gray wolves, coyotes, and a potential ancestral DNA for the dog, coyote, gray wolf. And we're really interested to think about, well, which of the organisms is most closely related to dogs and which one is maybe most closely related to the ancestor. All right, and the way we would do that is we would compare base by base to see the similarities. Oh, here I see that dog is different here. All right, base by base I would compare to see which ones are more similar. 
all right ooh, I see similarities but the ancestors different here and I would count up the differences and to do this you would have to be very strategic I could do this for DNA bases and I could also do this for amino acids this is something you'll do in class but notice that you would want to compare them two at a time to make it easier and you would kind of want to bubble or circle the ones that are the differences and count how many have stuff in common and how many bases were different so you'd want to be strategic we're going to try to answer this question in class wonderful job guys Woo!